Good, good. Good evening, Rabbi. Good evening, how are you? How was your vacation? How was it? your Shabbat? Everything was okay? Very yes. nice, quiet, but good. Thank you. Shabbat Tov. Shabbat Tov, Okay. Okay. Uh, I hope that you know what is the topic of tonight. Yes? Yes, Rob. Love your child for free, part three. Part three tonight. Very good. <clears throat> okay. So now, after a long experience, I want to tell you that every attempt to change the character of the child or his personality, you're wasting energy and you off the road, meaning you off target This is not what you need to accomplish because it will never be accomplished. Because personality is personality. You have to work with the personality. The work on the Hinu, it's not a product design. It's not like a piece of wood that you are gonna make a piece of furniture out from. That's exactly what the Torah says, Ki Adam etza sadeh, a person is like a tree. Why? Ask the farmer when he plowing the land and he is planting seeds, does he know how it's gonna come out? Does he know? All he have to do what is? No, he has to take care of it, but he doesn't know the end result. Very good. And he knows that he is not in control. The farmer knows. He just do what he can do. Did you see once a farmer that's go to the tree and give it a kick and say, why didn't you bring apples like I thought I was expecting you? But this is the truth. And the Torah saying it out loud, black and white. A person is like a tree. You put an effort, you put the seeds and you plant and, and you give it whatever it needs. What will come out of it? Only Hashem knows. So you can live in peace when you know that the outcome is not in our hands. You, our, our job is to do to the best of our ability. Meaning the child have seeds of Akadosh Bolho inside. That's what we have to grow. The rest is up to Hashem. So now, every child have a different personality. Don't you see it in, you, in your own homes? 
Don't we see it? They're coming from the same Abba, same Ima, everything is the same. But every child is something else. Each one of them. Different personalities. So we have to invest on each one according to his personality without thinking about what's going to be the outcome. Invest. Plow. Wear it. Do your best with that you can do. Because the children is not the measure to tell you if you're a good parent or not. Usually we're marking ourselves if we were successful or not, how the kids came out. And it's wrong. If you put the best effort, but I'm saying best effort, right? You took him to the right yeshiva board and you put it the right in environment and you gave him the best thing that you can do. So you as a parent, you did what you had to do. The rest is in a Kadushbow who's hands. You have to accept it. You have to accept it. So now, how are we going to enhance the love that we have for our kids? Love is not a science that is exactly. Love is an art love is a skill like any other skill you have the ability to deepen the skill and to make it much better it's very much possible that we dealt with love or we had the understanding that love is like a database. Either you have it, either you don't have it. It's wrong. You can acquire it. You can work on it. Well, yeah. Now, how do we know that? That's what the Torah says. Ve'ata Israel, and now ah, you could go. Where is the fam day? Fam day. Sorry. Okay. Ma Hashem elokecha shoel meimach. What Hashem wants from you? Hashem wants us to love him. So now, if Hashem commanded you to, to love him, meaning he's not there yet, because if he's there, why should I have to, to command you? Meaning the love is not there. And now we have to work on it. And is our choice to work on it and to learn how to love Hashem. There is many ways how to start to awaken the feeling for love. But we have to start with this. Every parent over here, no matter who he is, loves his child. That's for sure. This I have no doubt, Bishlam. 
But along the way, sometimes in a certain times in our life, we'll feel that we got disconnected emotionally from our kids, or we are angry at them. It's natural and is expected. Okay. You have to know that it's normal. It cannot be all the time that lovey-dovey, right? There is always some obstacles along the way. So if you feel that you got a little bit far from your kids, the relationship is not like it used to be. The first step that we have to do is what? The recognition that we still love our kids. You have to recognize that deep in your heart there is a special place for that child in your heart. Because when you get angry, we always thinking we lost this child. You never lose a child. There is always a corner there in your heart, deep, that loves this child. It's possible that this special place that you have for your child in your heart is covered with anger, with an anxiety. Maybe now you don't see it because it's undercover, but it's there. Test yourself. A child that you feel cold, that you feel that you know what? I don't want to hear from him. I don't want to do that. No. If has for shalom, something happened to the child. What's going to happen? Are you going to say, eh, let them deal with this? You're going to jump like a lion. You're going to jump. All of a sudden, all the love that fell asleep, bah, get awakened. And all the feelings of the anger and disappointment will disappear. Now the love took over. We have to do something for our child. So we all love our kids. So maybe we have to do that. When you have difficult time with your child, very difficult time. When he say, push you and you making effort to come close to him and the child don't want. Close your eyes and start to think. Even though it's difficult. Close your eyes and think what I would have do, what I would have done if something bad will happen to him. He's still my child. So then, the difficulty is that you have now, it will not get out of hand. It will stay, you know, in control. It's very difficult to continue to love when the child sending you signals that is angry at you and it pushes you away. 
But we have to remember as parents that this is our obligation to continue to give. Continue to give. And to believe that the seeds of the love one day they're going to come out as a big tree. It's not easy, I know. It's easy to talk. Not easy to observe. But we mentioned already a few times that love is work that needs a lot of effort. But it's one of the most beautiful work that Hashem gave us. And one of the most important ones that we have in our life is love. So now, can, can, can it be, right, that you meet your friend on the street and she telling you, you know, we moved to the city and it's so excited, you know, we're living now in Manhattan. I like the, you know, the pace, the noise, that's what I like, you know. And the other one, she used to live in the city. She ran away from the city. She went to Long Island. A peace and quiet. Now, if you living in a place when everything is fast, everything pa pu pa, it will put you under pressure. Huh? Yes, yes, for sure. Yes. Depends for whom. Ooh. Depends for who. So. So you want to tell me that all the people who live in the city, they're all under pressure, stress, they're on pills. So why do you live there? They love it. They love this space. So some people love it. Some people hate it. They don't like it. How come they like the city and the other one don't like the city? No. This one has a personality that he doesn't like this. The other one has the opposite personality. He likes it very much. If you bring him to Long Island, he will die from boredom. Yeah? Each one like according to his personality. Every person has his own. How about our kids? Don't they have a personality? One is a, one is a, a stormy one. He likes action like this. And the other one, all the time, mommy is bothering me. Mommy, I can't take it. Mommy making noise. And he looks at him like retarded. And the other one says, he, he, he needs pills. He might, he, he, Giving pills is too excited. Two different, two different kids, two different personalities.
So now, do we have the same personality of our kids? What do you say? No, no. Other people can tell better than us. Sometimes we can't write. Which child have your personality? Not exactly, right? None of them has exactly our personality. Sometimes they are like you. Most of the time, they're not like you. Maybe you have difficulties with your daughter. That she likes to sit always in the back of the classroom. And you as a child, you always like to sit huh? in front. In front. Yes. And it's good. You say, Mommy, I don't like the front. Why you don't like the front? You can see the teacher, you can see the board, you can see. Why are you sitting on the way? That's who she is. She don't like to be up front. She likes to be not noticeable. So now the, the fact that she is not involved in the class is bothering you because you were not like that. And she is comfortable with this. She likes it. So now we have to recognize that we looking at our child from our eyes, from our glasses. So if you are, and your child is, is a, his behavior is not normal. His behavior is not normal. Why is it? Why this child is? Because you were, you have a character, a personality of me, of professor. See now, the child have Manhattan personality. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And you are not like that. So you cannot take it. But why is his fault? This is his personality. Or the opposite. Your daughter, she is quiet, like to sit by the end of the, and you the opposite in the front. And now the fact that she is quiet bothering you, why she's so quiet? Maybe she don't have self-confidence and everything. Not necessarily. Other people will tell you, you're lucky you have such a child. Come to my house. It's a riot in my house. Why? Because she likes it. In the back, she's quiet, she's okay with herself, she's happy with herself. So some kids are serious. Some kids, they talking all day long. Go, 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 And some, ooh, ah, a drama queen. Every small thing, a drama. Each child is something else. Don't put an X on a character. And don't say to, and don't, send a signal to your kids, we don't like this character. 
because he came to the world with this kind of a character because to reach his goal, that's what the child needs. You develop him through this character. The other one came quiet because if she came or he came to the world to do other things. So we as parents, we have to be manageable, flexible, to accept each child the way he is. That's the character, that's the personality. Now how we channel it to the right channel, that's all. There is so many beautiful things in our kids that we don't see. You see, somebody told me, I think, a while ago, that his child came from school, and he said to his mother, there is one boy there that nobody wants to be his friend. So he said, I decided to be his friend. It's not fair what my friends are doing. I'll be his best friend. I'm telling you, even if this child is a, your child I'm talking about, child, you don't like the character, child, he's doing troubles, everything. But just by him saying this, he might not fail. I decided to be his friend. Smart. What a child he is, what a heart he has. Amazing. Concentrate on this. On this we have to concentrate. Well, our kids don't have any good sight. They don't. They have many, many good sides because we disappoint them from the sides that we don't like. So we don't see the side and it's very difficult for us to show love to, to them because we disappoint them. If, so I said to, to, to the mother, so what did you tell your child? So I told him, you're tzaddik, I'm so proud of you. I said, very good, very good. And then next to everybody, when you're sitting on the table, you say to your husband, what a child you have, what a tzaddik, you know, tell the story. Say it. And let the child say it now to Abba. And Abba will jump from his chair and say, Tzaddik. Call a cover to you. I'm so proud of you. You have such a heart. Such a good boy you are. You're building a child. And you're building your love toward the child. One more thing, don't compare. Comparison is, is not fair and it's not nice. Success or failure, it's not. According to whom? According to whom? Who will decide if the child is a failure or if the child is Successful one. For, 
for you, your child is a failure. For the other one, he looks and says, Psst. You cannot measure them. It might very well be that for your child to learn, to learn 10 minutes straight is a very big achievement, huge. But you have another child that he can sit half an hour and an hour. And when you're comparing these two, he says, zero, 10 minutes. Look at your brother, he can do it. He can sit half an hour. Why only 10 minutes from you? For him is a big achievement because he, he, he doesn't have these abilities. So instead of saying, mommy is proud of you, 10 minutes you learn, wow, 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 wow. You, you look at the, the other one as a ah, 10 minutes, half an hour, hour. Don't put the child down. Except you and your child. Nobody knows how much effort your son invested when he gave up on the game. Or he restrained himself to hit somebody. Nobody knows. Hashem also don't give the same reward to every person. Some people is easy to, for them to restrain themselves. And so some people is mamash like the splitting yamsuf. You think it's going to be, and both of them were able to restrain themselves. Whom do you think Hashem will give the biggest reward over here? To the one that it was easy for him or the one it was difficult for him? More difficult, the bigger the reward. Yes. It might very well be that your child that said 10 minutes, he did much better than your child that able to learn half an hour straight because he has to put a lot of effort. Many times we're putting our children down because we want them to be like us. What taking you so long to make the math? But for her or him, it's a big deal. They're not skilled for math. So if he said, and he broke his, he said, he might come and says, you didn't finish yet? You didn't finish yet? Your sister already eating in the kitchen. How long does it take you to make all this? What an approach. Instead of saying, Kolakavod, I see that it's difficult. And even though you're sitting here for 20 minutes already to figure it out, Kolakavod to you. Good. Mommy is proud of you. But we don't have the it's patient because we want to know yalla, yalla, yalla.
Shakti. Did somebody ask the child if he is able to do it, capable? Maybe he has difficulties. Because when we start to compare, you don't know what is the ability of your child because you're busy all the time with other people doing. When you concentrate on your child, you will know his abilities. So you stop to criticize the child. And every time he come up with a right answer, you should be a cheerleader. Even though he's taking more than you are accustomed to and used to, but for him is an achievement. So if you're gonna leave the comparison and you concentrate on your child being much easier to enhance the love that you have toward your child. We don't have to, to wait for something radical to happen and then I know I love my child. But above all, you have to understand that the child has God's values. Hashem sent them to you. The, the Admol that, that he has Few books, one of them is Esh Kodesh. And he wrote another book that called Chovat Talmidim, the obligation of the students. Listen to what he writes years and years ago. He says, a behavior that we call it, right? He has some disturbing, disturbing behavior. Carelessness or rebellion. He said, this is not what this child is. This is only the outside. The child has inside that you don't know. And it's impossible to take this away from the child. He has a part of Hashem inside of him. So we need an effort. And a lot of prayers. Then he said to the parents, you're going to be able to enhance the good that your child has is in Neshama. So, don't make your love conditional. Chas shalom to do that. Avat Chinam, love for free. If you try through love to get nice behavior, or oh, this is an outcome of good behavior, I'm going to give you love. We're going back to the grocery store. Avat Chinam should be the, by the name. Love for free, don't pay. You come into the store, he says, don't pay me. That's for you, Khabibi, you know. 
That's love. How many times you told your child, and please, you know, let's talk it over. Mommy loves you because you're behaving very nicely. Did we say it? From time to time, you do say it, yes. What do you say? Just what Ralph mentioned. I love you what? because because you're behaving. I love you the way you behaved in school. Mara has told me you were, how good you were. How to make it, you are our tzaddik, Rebbe said. Okay. So why do you love the child? Because of his positive behavior. Meaning if you're not going to behave. There's no love. There's no love. If you're not going to pay, there is no milk for you. That's not true, Rabbi. You're just mentioning that you love them the way they're behaving because you want to bring those potentials in the child to show them that you appreciate what they're doing, that you like what they're doing, to praise them so they have ability to do more. It doesn't show that you don't love them. Isn't it, Rabbi? So, Rabbi, if you say, oh, I love how you guys are playing, is that okay to say, or is that only they're playing nice? You love them. You're playing very nice. Because the child understands in his mind that the love that he gets now because of his good behavior. We have a question whenever you're ready. You can say, I'm proud of you. Rav. Don't say I'm a proud of you. Don't say love. Don't say it. Rav? Yes. Um, I have a question. What's wrong with positive reinforcement? Someone's asking. I saw it. Oh, okay. Sorry. You can be as positive as you can be. Don't mention the word love because the child. When he hears this, I'll tell you how he thinks. Meaning if I'm not going to behave, mommy gonna not gonna tell me that she loves me. That's not love. So Rob, what if you say it makes me so happy when you're playing so nicely? It makes me happy, okay. But we can't say mommy loves how you're playing no. nicely? No. Happy Rabbi, okay. Yes. Rabbi, what if I say mommy loves you? It's your behavior that mom doesn't like. Doesn't like. It's con it's conditional. That's con uh, conditional. Mommy only loves you when you behave. That's yes. what I'm saying. Yes. What up? What about the children? I've heard numerous times kids asking mommy, like after she reinforces them and says positive reinforcement, and says, Mommy, do you love me? And the mother says, Yeah, of course I love you. What does that mean? I mean, it's I just I just numerously heard some uh, kids asking. Does that also unconditional love? Is because the child has the meaning that the mother has something negative? Is that what it is? Meaning is like you're already so thirsty that it has to come out of you already. Why does he have to ask it? Because he, the child don't, don't feel it. He came to a point that he should ask you, that he have to ask you, do you, do you love me? How do you feel when you have to ask your husband, do you love me? Where is it coming from? Doubt. You feel that he doesn't love you, so you're asking. Insecurity. No.
it's very much worth it that the child should hear, I love you because you're my child. There. No behavior, this, you're my child. I love you. You giving your child a, a candy and, and the child says, Mommy, why are you giving me a candy? Because mommy loves you. Mm. Or Ima comes with a candy, the same candy, she said, you helped me a lot. Today, here is a candy for you. What the child understand? From the first scenario, Rob, or the second? If you pay, you're gonna get a candy. Yeah. So Rabbi, I don't understand. You love the child, but you don't like his behavior, let's say. Yes. How do you, how do you talk to him then? I love you, but I don't like your behavior. How, how should you... First, you have to send a message. You, my child, mommy loves you very much. Okay. And then... We'll get to it too. Uh, that's... This is my next thing. Okay. It's very much worth it to separate love from behavior. Yes, because the child you love always. It but you have to know that. Uh -huh. Example. Your child came home late. Dirty. And he lost his wallet. Or... The money that, that you gave him as an allowance, he lost it. After a speech that you gave him, why are you late? Why are you dirty? Why are you irresponsible? Where is the money that I gave you? It's very much recommended to say, you have to know that mommy loves you very much. Even though I told you all this, this is, I said what I said, but you have to understand mommy loves you very much. So first you were negative, okay. But then you came with something that the child was not expecting. We love you no matter what. This I did because I have to put, I have to, to teach you, okay, to be more responsible and to come back home on time. But we love you very much. Even though I told you all this, we love you very much. This you have to know. So the child knows. You're saying it to him. And it's helping us to get out of the anger that we have. So, Avat Chinam, let's summarize it and define it. The definition is, you give to the child without any connection to his behavior. 
because it's your child. So now, how can we show love to the child? Sincere one, life giving us many chances to give their med sincere love to our kids. It only needs a recognition, you know, to recognize, to be alert. If you open up your eyes, easy. You can make many small things that happening every day to expose your love to the child. Small things. Your child is about to go to school. Ima says, wait for me, wait for me. I'm coming with you today to escort you. Right? Out of nowhere. When he is coming back, open up your arms. I missed you. Finally, you came home. Wow, wow, wow. The child, you know what the child is doing. The kids know now they convinced that we love them. Imagine this, that you're cooking something for your child. And when the, and you, you know that the child likes this food. And when the child come home, we tell them, Yankee, Yankee, today when I was cooking the food, I thought about you all day. I say, this is for my Yankee. I was imagining already how much you're gonna be happy when you see the schnitzel that you so much like. The whole day I was thinking about you. How about if your husband will tell you something like that? You're feeling seventh heaven, Rob. Anybody home? Anybody home? Or I'm, uh... No, you'll feel like you're in seventh heaven, Rob. Be the best thing ever. So, if you as a grown up, you'll be in seventh heaven, imagine a child. They don't need more than that. A small candy that coming out of nowhere. Moishi, come sweetie, come. What, mommy, here, take a candy. Why, mommy? Because mommy loves you. That's all. Rob, How much it costed you? Nothing. It co it pennies. <laughs> but Rob, you said, Rob mentioned before that you said when you give the candy, you said because mommy loves you. So that, does the child interpret that when you don't surprise him with a candy or a treat or a present that you don't love him or is just extra love, like a bonus? He knows already that, uh, that mommy, you see, you're talking from Mese that I'm suspecting. Yes, right. The child knows already, is sure, mommy, it came out of nowhere, but met Ima loves me. Example, Abba is coming back from, 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 from work. He spoke already to Ima. He says, I'm, I'm gonna take, 
Chaim to the pizza. Today, don't say to him anything. Haba comes home. Chaim, yeah, let's go. Come. Me and you today going to, 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 to the pizza. Why? Abba, you taking me to pizza? Why? Because Abba loves you. That's the reason. Come, Sadiq. Go. Abba loves you. Yeah. The child thing, maybe I, I behaved okay, and the, and the child says, I'm not behaving, I'm not bringing any great grades. Where is this coming from? Small things. The child coming from school and you on the phone. Why can't you say, okay, I cannot speak now. My children came from school and I want to be only with them now. What did you say now? My children are important and they're my priority. But listen to the sentence. I cannot speak now. Okay. My kids came from school. Okay. I want to be only with them. Bingo. You show them by your actions that you're putting them as a priority first. Mommy wants to be only with us. But we have to say it. I, I brought a few examples, simple ones, that, that, that we can do it every day. We think if you're gonna make him surprise birthday party and we're gonna uh, bring magician that he likes and everything like then we will be loving wrong wrong small things will build it up if you're gonna look for it you're gonna find it I told you many times I'll tell you again the kids when they grow up they will not remember if the house was clean or not. They will not remember if you changed the sheets or not. They're not going to remember all this. Clue. What are they going to remember? You're spending time with them. The Do way you know? that you treated them. Did you listen to them? Did you give them nice instruction? for life. This we will always remember. Always. So we can do it every day, many times. What's the big deal? We just have to be on our toes, to be alert. They, they need it. The same way that I'm talking to the man and I'm telling him, you don't have to buy necklaces and for example, one flower can, can do it. A small gift to, to, you, to, 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 to your wife and this is it. And the wife shouldn't complain. No, she will not complain because she was not expecting all this. And it's not because of the mikveh and it's not because of that right away she tells me, woman, what does he want? Klum, it's not our anniversary. I didn't ask him to buy me. 
שום דבר, כלום. I brought you because I love you. That's it. Small thing will create very big things. Okay, now, from time to time, we have to tell our children simply, we love you. The speech have big power. Is not, don't bring an attitude like we have, my husband knows that I love him. Or the husband, Bechlal, she knows I love her. Kids don't know this language. They need to hear it. To hear it. Clearly. And he's ready to hear it 55 times a day. And it's good for us also. It will be good for us also. Because it's reminding us that we love our kids. Why? Sometimes the relationship is not that great with the child. And the child sometimes, he, he, he doesn't want to believe that what you're saying is truthful so don't think that the child doesn't need it even though he showed you that ah, okay he is behaving like that because he needs to hear it more and more until you will build the trust in the child that by met what you're saying, you mean it. If the child shows that he doesn't believe you yet, don't give up, continue. We love you, we love you, we love you until his anger will, will collapse. A mother once told me, after one of my lectures, she took me to the side and she told me, you know, my child is talking to me in chutzpah. I said, how? She said, I tell him, we love you. So he used to answer back to them, lo nachon. It's not correct. Stop talking to me like that. You, you don't love me. So I told her, so what did you do? She said, I, I, I took a deep breath. I will continue to tell you that we love you until you're going to believe us. What do you think? What do you think happened at the end? Child believed him? Yeah. At the end, he believed it. So when you coming back again and again, Abba and Ima loves you. No matter what you do, we love you. No matter what you do, we love you. 
time after time after time, and you have to show it with small things. The child will trust it, will trust you, will believe in you, and it will be more relaxed, right? Much more relaxed. Right. Much more. Tomorrow night, if it's a shame. We will deal with some people think that to love is to spoil the child. So the topic for tomorrow is love is spoiling a question mark. Because that's what it sounds like, yes? Yes. Okay. Imir Hashem tomorrow we'll deal with that. So we'll meet tomorrow again at nine o'clock. Imir Hashem. Thank you, Father Rob. Shavua Tov. Shavua Tov, Rob. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. 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 Thank you.